Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I want to talk about covariance. But why should you learn this? Well, first of all, covariance is inevitable in the computation of correlation. And covariance matrix is a very useful tool in matrix decomposition, which is of great importance in dimensionality reduction and in other machine learning applications. At the end of this video, I will leave you with a nice animation so make sure to watch this video till the end. I hope you are super excited. So let's get started. We are going to start from the beginning. Here's our one dimensional data set and we want to find the variance of this data. Well, variance is a measure of how much concentrated or scattered the points are around the mean. We compute this by adding the squared distances of all the points from the mean. Then we divide the sum by n minus 1. Why not n? Well, that I will explain in some other video. Here, the variance turned out to be 142.4. Now, let's take this to the next level. I am assigning another number to each of the points to make the dataset two dimensional. So now we are dealing with two variables. So far, we know the x variance of the points. Similarly, we can also compute the y variance. And the y variance is 25.9. Now we have both x and y variance, but these two alone don't say much about the distribution of the data in 2D. What I mean to say is by looking at the plot, we can clearly see that there's a trend as x increases y also increases, but we can't infer this trend or relation from the x and y variance values. For example, take this set of points. The x and y variance remains the same, but the orientation or the trend is completely opposite. Here comes the covariance between x and y. The formula looks like this. It says for each point, Compute the difference between its x coordinate and the x mean, and the difference between its y coordinate and y mean. Then multiply them. Let's see this in action. After doing this for all the points, you can see that the points lying in the green region give positive values and the points in the red region give negative values. In our case, we have more points in the green region than red. So our sum will be positive and hence the covariance will be positive. But if we had more points in the red region, then the covariance would be negative. And it's not very hard to see that more positive points mean x and y are increasing together. And more negative points mean x is increasing but y is decreasing or vice versa. And that's how covariance quantifies the direction of the trend. But it does not say how strong the trend is. And covariance is very sensitive to scaling. Can you guess the range of possible values for covariance? Yeah, it can lie anywhere between negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's come to the covariance matrix. Along the main diagonal, you can see covariance of x with itself and covariance of y with itself. It might seem a little strange, but if you put the same variable twice in the covariance formula, you will find it's just the variance. I'm leaving this as an exercise for you. The other two entries of the matrix are the covariance of x and y. For our case, it looks like this. As I said earlier, 
covariance only tells you the direction of the trend between two variables. It can't measure the strength of the relationship. To quantify the strength of the relationship, we can use correlation coefficient. And the formula goes like this. Notice that in the numerator, we have nothing but the covariance. And we are kind of normalizing this by the product of square root of x and y variance. Because of this denominator, unlike covariance, correlation coefficient does not get affected by scaling. The value of correlation lies between negative 1 and positive 1. If two variables are highly correlated in the positive direction, that is, both x and y increase together, then we get a value close to 1. And if x increases but y decreases or vice versa, then we get a value close to negative 1 and a value close to 0 if there's no linear relationship. In our case, we get a value of 0.75, which means x and y are positively correlated. Here I want to mention one very important thing. A high correlation coefficient does not imply that y is dependent on x or vice versa because there could be a third variable z unknown to us which is the reason behind the values of x and y which does not mean that x is causing y or y is causing x. In other words, correlation is not causation. Now I'm going to leave you with a small animation so that you can visualize how the values of covariance and correlation change with the distribution of points.